or ask the graph a rational function. So let's do a quick analysis and see what steps are involved in dealing with this type of problems. To be able to graph something like this, there's a very specific steps that one ought to follow. Uh, the first two steps is finding out where the special value is. Obviously, since this is a fraction, it's a rational, when the bottom denominator equal to zero, we call those holes, as in fx is going to tumble into it where it becomes undefined because you can't divide it by zero. And also, we are looking for where the zeros are when this fx equal to zero, since, again, it's a fraction. When the numerator equal to zero, the function itself gets to be zero. After appearing the first one and two of special values, we move on finding the ending behavior and behaviors. Horizontal asymptotes is when x approaches a really large number or a really negative number. We're trying to see what happens to the function end behavior wise. And then we also want to call this a vertical asymptotes. That's what happens when fx is approaching where it's not defined. And then putting one, two, three, four all together, we have a graph. So this is kind of an exciting problem to work on. So let's go through each one of the steps for this graph, uh, for this function we're given. All right, so, so far, let's go through the analysis using the steps here. For holes is when the f function is undefined as the denominator equal to zero, that happens when x equal to minus or plus two. We draw those vertical lines as if, think of it as a, it's a cliff. The function is going to break because the function does not exist when x equal to two or x equal to minus two. The zeros are pretty easy. If you're setting the numerator equal to zero, x equal to one or minus one, the function becomes zero. So it will cross those two points that I'm uh, pointing over here. They are part of the function. So, so far that's, um, that's all we can uh, derive from the special values. Let's move on to step two and three, and this graph will take a much better shape from there. All right, the next two steps are a little more involved, but nothing we can't handle. Uh, let's do number three, which is horizontal asymptotes. Basically, we're saying what happens to the function when x is really, really large. So let's say we pick a thousand. Uh, when x is minus uh, infinity, let's say pick a one, negative 1,000. Okay, so uh, if you were to plug this function in there, it becomes 2.0006 or something, quite a bit of zeros in there. So in essence, when x gets really large on either side, then f function gets close to 2. That's where the green error is. So as x gets really, really big on either side, the function stops around 2, uh, above 2. So this is uh, function's behavior and behavior. We signify this with a little green arrow in green. Step number four, it's a little tedious, but once again, nothing we can't handle. Earlier, we have said that vertical holes where a function is not defined is x equal to minus 2 and when x equal to 2. Now, to find what the vertical behavior asymptote is, we need to approach the x a little bit closer from the negative side. That's the when x equal to minus 2.001 or when x equal to minus 1.999 close to it, but it can't quite touch it there. If you were to plug those two numbers in, you'll see that one on one side, the function gets to negative infinity. That's the red part. Um, if you were to approach from this side, two point, minus 2.001, x blows up to the positive infinity. That's what the blue part is. On the test, you can just use your calculator and actually put the numbers in here. Uh, once again, we are only interested in end behavior. So our end behavior is signified in the errors over here. When x is really close on this side, it blows up. That's where the end behavior is. When x is really close on this side, it goes to be negative. That's why when x equal to minus Minus two function is not defined. It's not continuous function. Similar things happens on this side. That's what um, x minus uh, x approach 1.99 and 2.001. Uh, once again, it's one is in red, one is in blue. Now connecting all those errors, that's the end behaviors. You have the curves for uh, for this 
segment over here where we had earlier had said when zeros are when x equal to 1 and minus 1 that's still the case over here connecting this arrow to this arrow we will have to cross x-axis because those two points are function um, where the function cross the x-axis where it cross y-axis that's pretty easy that's when x equal to 0 if you were to plug x equal to 0 in here you'll see it's minus 2 over minus 4 which is half all right, so combine everything here, we have the graph three branches. There's one branch here, second branch, and third branch over here. All right, now, uh, next slide, we'll see the computer-generated graph. It's identical to the ones we have over here. All right, so here's the computer-generated graph. Uh, here are our where zeros, where x function here, this branch cross x-axis. Here's the intercept when uh, function cross y-axis when x equal to zero. Here's where the horizontal behavior when x is really large it approaches two, uh, above two. And here's the function where it breaks around the zero, uh, around the host when x equal to minus two and uh, x equal to positive two. Well, I hope this helps. Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Please comment or share this video or hit the like button. Together, we can make math easy again. Have a confident day.